Good afternoon, my name is Michael Clifford and today I want to talk about typewriters. But before going on to typewriters, I just want to take a look at one aspect of typewriters and that's the keyboard. And that's why I'm going to start with the keyboard of a computer. And if you look at the keyboard of a computer, you will notice there's a huge range of buttons that you can press depending on what you want to do. You can have color as well. And when we talk about typewriters, you will notice there are some things which are similar, but there are also things which are slightly different. We have the letters all down around here, the spacebar for pushing spaces between words. We also have a row along here of the numbers that we use in a keyboard. And the, these are the parts I want to refer to a couple of times when we're talking about typewriters as well. Numbers and the letters and the spacebar. This is a very common type of typewriter which was very popular in the 1970s and the 1980s. So we didn't have a computer, but we had a, a, type, a typing machine. This uh, was a very popular make of typewriter. And one of the things you notice about it is it is quite light. And the other thing I want to draw your attention to is if you look at the keyboard here, what does it look like? It looks very like the keyboard that you have on the computer that we were talking about a while ago. So when computers are introduced, they really kept the same letters here. And sometimes it's referred to as the QWERTY type of keyboard that you have. So there was no change. So anybody who was able to type before using these had no great difficulty when it came to typing on a computer. And the big difference between this, a typewriter and a computer is if you type a letter on a computer, like you're writing a letter to Santi or you're writing a letter to your granny or whatever, you have it, you can store it on the computer and you can come back the following day and maybe you could change the letters or put in color in the letters, but that is not possible with a typewriter. So we'll take a look at how the typewriter works. So you need it first of all paper and you put the paper in and then you turn it the wheel here and up comes the paper for you to type. So you press a letter and they would show here on this little part here where the arm comes up. Just watch to see the way the arm comes up when you see the arm comes up. And then on the arm you have two letters. You have the letter we say M. You'd have it in ordinary size and as a capital letter. So you have the two of them. And you say then what about colour? I had two colors. If you look at the ribbon, you can see it's either black or the red. Now, the problem, of course, was there was a major problem and it was this. If you made a mistake, how were you going to rectify it? So you had to use a little sticky piece of liquid called a Tipex. So you had to stop typing, put the Tipex and hope that when you typed the correct word, the correct letter, then that maybe it would show up. So it was a little bit messy, but that was the only way. So it's like a very big difference between a computer and a typewriter here. Now, one of the things you might be wondering about is how would you get on to the next line? So when you have the line type, you just press like this and you start all over again and you do your typing and the machine floats, the letter, the paper and the arrow moves across. Yep. This is another type of typewriter. It's an older one. And if you look, you see it is the Imperial, the Good Companion Model T typewriter. And the first thing that would strike you when you would get it is how heavy it is. It's a very, very heavy typewriter. It comes from the time just before the Second World War in the 1930s. And it was looked upon as one of the most important and one of the best pieces of typing equipment that you could have. And if you look here, you can see all the letters very, very clearly. So I'm going to turn it around. You see there is two. There's a, a small C and a large C. And it would hit the ribbon and that's what would print on the page that you have here in front of you. And if you look at the ribbon, there's a black part of it and a red part. And what you have in that is ink. 
blacking or red ink. So that is how you would switch, how you get either black or red. And if you remember when we were talking about computers, we had any number of colors, but on these, you had only two, the red and the black. And the paper went in in exactly the same way as the previous one. And you moved it up and then you started your typing. And when you came to the end, you pressed the arm and it brought it back and you started again. I press a letter, the arm comes up and it hits the tape, depending on whether I want it on the black or the red. And I can switch from black to red. And there is ink on these, you've either black ink or red ink. And this spools around, there's two spools inside. And you can see, look at the spools here with the, with the tape. And when you press, you see the cord moves across ever so slightly. Then to get on to the next line, and you notice the page came up ever so slightly, and then I started typing again. Can you imagine listening to that all day as you're typing? Out of a couple of people doing the typing inside an office. And then when you come to the end, there will be a, a ring of a bell to remind you that you've got to the end of the page. So now it was your time to push the, the arm back and you start off again on the next slide. There was a time when maybe a person, if they were writing a letter, they would use a biro or a pen or pencil and paper and send it off to somebody. This would allow you to type a letter onto a plain sheet of paper. And when you come to the bottom of the page, you just keep going and you scroll and you get the page out. And that's your page typed up. Now, and that's your letter typed rather than handwritten. So this is what the idea was behind these. It allowed you to type rather than to handwrite a letter to wherever you wanted to write. Now, when people would leave school and they expressed an interest in learning how to type, they go to school offering these type of courses and there'd be a booklet with it. And this is the booklet that went with this man, this computer here. This was the booklet or the manual that went with it. And there was quite a number of pages in it. And it gave you details as to how you'd use all the different keys. And this, so that course quite often could take you maybe six months or so. And then you went out looking for your job. And the fact that the keyboard was the same on the more modern typewriters and on computers, it made it very easy for people to switch from working on a typewriter to working on a computer. This was the type of equipment that became available in the 1930s. And between the 1930s and the advent, or, or when computers came around, this is what you had if you wanted to type a, a letter or whatever you would like to type, a bill or a letter to Sandy or to your grannies or to your parents or to your friends. This is what you would have. Now, you might say, is it of much use today? It is still available today, but it's more looked upon as a collector's item.